bloody fight among a large group of skateboarders in Balboa Park. Who's responsible for making you safe and secure in the city's crown jewel? Oops, they went to pay for parking, but instead ended up on a website for porn. Now the city of La Mesa is trying to figure out how it happened. Plus, a doctor and nurse accused in the death of an inmate at the Las Colinas Jail appear in court. The deeper meaning behind this year's pride theme, Thrive. And ways to stay cool this summer without breaking the bank. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. We first showed you this video Friday night of what looks like a group of teenage boys storming a 7-Eleven in Little Italy and stealing everything they can get their hands on. Another chaotic and dangerous scene was recorded in Balboa Park. Tonight, we're hearing from a man who was caught in that chaos. Good evening, I'm Carla Chiquetta. I'm Marcella Lee. We're told both incidents happened last Wednesday on International Go Skateboarding Day. CBS 8's Anna Laurel has been covering the story since Friday. Tonight, she's live in Balboa Park where someone was beaten and bloodied by a mob of skateboarders. Anna. That's right, you guys. That chaos and fight broke out at the fountain here behind me. Now. Skateboarding is not even allowed in Balboa Park, but no one stopped the more than 100 skateboarders who are here. And as of tonight, no one is in trouble for the violence that happened. When Brian Sanders got to Balboa Park last Wednesday, he quickly took his son into the Fleet Science Center, away from skateboarders around the fountain. You could just feel there was a bad energy there. You could feel that something was going to happen. The man who took this video told me he started recording because he could sense something about to happen. And it did. This was the scene when Brian left the Fleet Science Center at 5. It was lawlessness. It had that feeling of a riot. He called 911 and says dispatch told him police were on the way and park rangers were taking care of it. And I saw somebody break out and run. I saw several people chase them. I saw people wielding skateboards, hitting somebody. They were hitting them on the ground. Several minutes in, you see this person on the ground covered in blood. I was shocked and I was angry. I was angry that this was happening in my park, in our park, in the jewel, the crown jewel of San Diego. Here you see Brian holding his son's hand, walking up to Rangers. He asks them why it takes so long to intervene. There's no place for that in a public park. And to have that right where all the families are coming out, he wasn't the only child to see it. This is video a man in Little Italy posted. A group of skateboarders run into his neighborhood 7-Eleven, grab everything they can and take off. This was also Wednesday afternoon, right before the Balboa Park fight. On Balboa Park's website, it shows skateboarding is not allowed. A spokesperson for the city told me today, park rangers called police around 4.15 when the group showed up at Balboa Park after skating around downtown. Because there were more than 100 of them, rangers didn't feel they could step in. Rangers are not law enforcement. They depend on San Diego police. Brian says he never saw police before he left. I saw going in that this trouble was going to happen. And the fact that nobody responded and that there was no action taken to prevent that is really, I think someone needs to be accountable for that. Okay, so late this afternoon, I got a response finally from the San Diego Police Department. Of course, we contacted them repeatedly about this story starting Friday. Um, SDPD was present for much of this event. Our investigation has so far determined that the organizer and group at large were not responsible for the damage, theft, and assault following the event. It appears smaller groups broke off from the main event and were responsible for these criminal acts. Now, I don't know what event they're talking about, so I have submitted some follow-up questions and haven't gotten a response yet. Live in Balboa Park, I'm Anna Laurel for CBS 8. Carlo? Anna, and I understand in doing this story, you learned that police followed some of the skaters around last year, and that may not have been the case this year. Have we learned more on that? That's right. So Brian, in our story, who we interviewed today, he said that he asked the police, where were they? They, they had heard about these, the 7-Eleven. They told him, yeah, we knew that this was happening. We knew this was International Go Skateboarding Day. Last year, there was a police presence that followed these skateboarders around town and everything stayed peaceful. And Brian says that the officer he spoke with actually told him they basically dropped the ball on this. All right. Anna Laura reporting live. Very disturbing video in that story. Thanks, Anna. 
The teen riding an e-bike that collided with a van in Encinitas last week has died. The family of 15-year-old Brody Braxton Champlain Kingman made the announcement on a GoFundMe page today. The San Diego Sheriff's Department says they are seeing a dramatic increase in e-bike collisions. The Encinitas City Council recently passed new e-bike regulations. After a second reading this week, they're set to go into effect. Among the new rules, law enforcement would require bike safety courses for traffic violations and helmet rules would be better enforced for those under 17. And only one rider will be allowed on a bike at a time unless a bike is specifically built to carry more than one person. City leaders in La Mesa are trying to figure out why some QR codes that are supposed to help people pay for parking are directing them to websites promoting pornography instead. CBS 8 Steve Price joins us live from La Mesa to show us the problem and how the city is solving it, at least temporarily. Steve? Yeah, Marcella, let me go ahead and show you the temporary solution. The city came out here and they covered all of these QR codes with a marker. So if you scan them, nothing will happen. They no longer work. Now, the city tells me these stickers were first put up here last summer, but they didn't learn there was an issue until yesterday. The QR codes you see on parking meters around La Mesa are supposed to take you here, the Park Smarter app, where you can pay for parking on a stored credit card. But when we scanned meters around town, we were directed to Google search pages, including one for the Securities and Exchange Commission and another one we had to blur out because it's promoting pornographic videos. Welcome to La Mesa. It's a wonderful place to do business, but it's sometimes interesting. Yeah. Suzanne Laterra says her customers have used the app to add money to their meter, but she had no idea something was wrong with the QR codes until she saw city workers covering up the codes Monday morning. He was just kind of doing his business and moving on to the next one. A parking enforcement officer quickly walked past us this morning and check out his left hand. He's holding a black marker. Every single QR code we saw after that was covered up. The city acknowledged they are aware of the issue and got rid of the QR codes, adding in a statement, the vendor of the parking meters has been contacted and alerted of the issue. The vendor has been asked to correct the issue and provide an explanation of the problem. QR codes have become extremely popular since the pandemic. In fact, several businesses in La Mesa use them including Suzanne's. We use them even for, well, you know, business cards. A lot of my styles have a QR business code where you can tap through, you can pay, you can make an appointment. Yeah, it's, it's definitely something that we utilize, but it needs to be the right, the right one. So late this afternoon, I got another email from the city. They said they have now heard back from the vendor and the vendor explained that the problem is that you first have to open the app and then scan the QR code. You can't just scan it with your phone, which is what you would normally do in a restaurant or any other place when you normally see these QR codes. The city has now asked for replacement stickers from the vendor that will fix that problem. Marcella. Yeah, Steve, that seems weird. Usually you just go to the QR code <laughs> and that's supposed to take you to the app or the website and now that they're covered up, we can't test that, right? So um, <laughs> to open the app first and then scan it, but that does, that seems counterintuitive. Anyway, do you know of anyone that has actually gotten a ticket after trying to use that app and then being unsuccessful at paying? I asked the city that very question. I thought how frustrating if you're trying to pay through their system and then you can't and you get a ticket. He said, no, we have not gotten any complaints. We didn't even know about this until a social media post on yesterday. That said, there are still some other ways you can pay Marcella. This meter here will take coins. It will take a credit card and you can still use the app. You just have to punch in manually the code that is listed on each one. But don't try to use the QR code, especially if you're a little kid, if you know what I mean. Yeah, that Google search uh, taking you to the list of pornographic website yeah. you wonder if mm. someone might have hacked that code or something directed to, <laughs> to that but I'm sure uh, it'll be investigated and new codes but put up soon thanks so much to you a sure. state of emergency declaration is being considered tonight over the ongoing water contamination in the South Bay people living there haven't been able to swim in their beaches for more than 500 days because of the sewage contamination from Tijuana. County supervisors say that a declaration would get the attention of the federal government and open doors to new resources to resolve the issue. The County Board of Supervisors is actually going to take up this issue tomorrow and discuss it. That's for tomorrow.
A doctor and a nurse charged in connection with the death of an inmate were in court for a preliminary hearing today. As CBS 8's David Gottfriedson reports, they are charged with involuntary manslaughter and the death of the female inmate at Las Colinas Jail in 2019. No justice! No, no peace. peace! A protest outside the El Cajon court Monday included family members of 24-year-old Elisa Serna who died in November 2019 while inside a cell at the Las Colinas Jail in Santee. Justice for Elisa Serna! Justice, Justice for Elisa Serna! A jail nurse, Dana Lee Pasqua, and the on-duty jail doctor at the time, Friederike von Lintig, are both charged with involuntary manslaughter in Serna's death. Prosecutors allege the nurse saw Serna fall against a wall in the cell, hitting her head and no medical aid was administered for nearly an hour. She was later found dead. Judge Selena Epley ruled no cameras would be allowed in court. A sheriff's detective testified that Cerner was pregnant, vomiting, and going through heroin withdrawal in the days before her death. She was being held in a medical isolation cell and was supposed to be monitored by the jail medical staff. After the hearing wrapped up, I caught up with one of the defendants outside court. Dr. Von Lintig had no comment on the case. If convicted of involuntary manslaughter, both the doctor and nurse face a maximum of four years in prison. The preliminary hearing will continue Tuesday at the Al Cajon Courthouse. David Goffordson, CBS 8. Thank you, David. Still ahead, we hear from a woman who lost her husband and son in the underwater Titan tragedy. Plus, what's next for the Club Q killer in Colorado after a plea deal with prosecutors? And a wind advisory across much of uh, San Diego's East County is going to make for some dangerous fire conditions. I'm meteorologist Sean Stiles. We'll talk about that and a warm up that's heading our way. And up next, the number of people who say they're thinking about leaving California.